Good morning, and thank you for tuning in 100.5 FM Sunday Morning Glory. This is Pastor Daniel Ortiz of the Fort Concho Mission Church. We're glad that you chose to tune in and worship with us this morning. We're going to start off right with our scripture, Psalms 1, 18, 24. Now let's say that together. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's sing that. that we can come into your house and sing your praises. Lord, and lift up anything that is going on. I know and I understand that there are some that are tuning in today that need a change and need something different in their life. There are some that may be visiting in the church house that need something different in their life, that need to go in a different direction, Lord. We pray that you open our spiritual eyes, ears, and hearts to be receptive to this word, that we may apply it in our everyday lives and understand that there is a new beginning, a new beginning each and every day, and it starts with you. We thank you, Lord, what you're doing, but most of all, as a group of believers, when we're praying, we thank you for the things that you're about to do. In Jesus' sweet, blessed name we pray, amen. You see, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Give your mind to Christ. The scripture says, he that ruleth his spirit is greater than he that taketh the city. Your mind is a heaven or a hell all the time. Which is it? When you come to Christ, you must bring your mind to him. There's a lot in the scripture to say about the mind. He's to be Lord of the mind. And Paul wrote to the Philippians and said, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. That's what you're to be thinking about. Pure, lovely, righteous, God. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Keep our minds on Christ. Many minds here tonight are filled with pride and anger and envy, jealousy, lust, the remedy is to let Christ take control of the mind. Amen, amen. That is the remedy. I know the last few weeks we were talking about the negativity, uh, what, what Satan can bring, his snares, his traps, and how he attacks. But you know what? There's one way that Satan loves to do and manipulate situations and get you in the wrong frame of mind and the wrong framing of thoughts is that you can have a sea of negativity that goes on up here, and if you allow it to stay, it grows root and it has anchor. And a lot of times, it controls your attitude, it controls what you say, what you do, and when, when it sticks around, it's hard to get rid of. And like what Billy was saying there, it's the mind is where it begins. And it's what we have to do is what the scripture reminds us to do. Think of whatever's good, whatever's right, whatever's noble, whatever's true, whatever's pure. And we think upon these things. But God, he left that love letter for us in his word so we can use that in our everyday lives and we can cling to it. So we can defeat being negative. One of the things is that Philippians 4, 8 tells us, if you look on the screen, it says, whatever things are of good report, think of these things. That's a reminder we have to think positivity. You know, you always hear the old saying, when life throws you lemons, you do what? You make lemonade. And that's true. 
That's true. That's the world giving it to you and giving you some positive advice. But the Lord says, you know, think of what's positive. Think of what's good. And it starts with thinking up here because so many times, even in the work environment, you'll notice if you work in a big office or there's a group of people or if there's groups, you'll find that there's one person that's negative. And it may be the start of the day. Everybody's starting off good. But that one person, if you notice, they start talking, then the next person next to them, and the next person next to them, and the next person, then you start having a whole group of negative people. And it just, and it all starts with, mm-hmm, agreement. You agree with them, mm-hmm, you're right. You're right, it is hot in here. You're right. You're right, it is hot. Those donuts were kind of off today. Yep, you're right. You're right. And then it starts, they see how it just starts. And usually it starts, starts real small. Little donuts or the air, and it starts snowballing. Snowball. And then you start having a whole group. I never, this lady has passed on. I used to work with her in the hospital. But I remember her. She was the queen of negativity. And she just started out, and she, we had little groups that we had, like, uh, uh, that worked on a particular group of uh, patients, like, on one side of the floor. And there was another group of nurses that worked on another side of the floor. And, but she was in group one. And I remember the mornings would start off right. We would have the word of the day. I'd put the word of the day up on the board and get everybody in a good attitude and start talking to everybody. And this one lady would come in, oh, it's just so cold in here. Why do we have to have it? So then she, she, then she goes, did you see that coffee? It just tastes terrible. That coffee this morning is terrible. And everybody's, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then before you know it, I come in at lunchtime. I come in back from lunch and everybody, it's no good in here. It's terrible. And everybody's complaining. I go, what happened? But it's all her group. All her group. And you know what? It just rubs off. It rubs off. And what I began to notice was is that we are in control and we make choices, but what we do often affects everybody around us. If dad comes in the house and I have a bad attitude and I'm very negative, it gives off to the rest of the house. No matter what day that they were having before I walked in, but if I come in with a negative, it rubs all over and everybody else is me. It just happens. We have to be aware of the power that we possess with our choices, our words, and actions. Psalms 103.5 says, He fills my life with good things so that I stay young and strong like an eagle. Uh, there's something that I step back, and now that I remember this woman, she was not very old. She was, not, she was a few years older than me. And I remember... As the years went on, she seemed to age more and more and more and more. Now, she's passed away. She's already passed away before. But, you know, I believe that she aged so much because of her negativity, and she didn't take care of her body well. She was a chain smoker, and she just smoked, 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 smoked. But you know what? We all have choices to make. Every single, we have a choice to wake up and say, you know what? This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Or whatever comes my way, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to get through it. I'm going to handle it. We're going to do the best that we can through it. And you got to. You have to. You have to. And especially now when you got so many stressors in the world going on. I know this last couple months, we've had a lot of stuff at our house, huh, babe? We've had the sewer. We had the central heat and air. We had our cars. And it was just one thing after another, after another, after another, after another. And you know what? He's like, wow. It just, but we go through it, and it happens to everybody, and you just keep on going. You just keep on going. You say, Lord, you're in control, and you're going to make it work. I'm going to trust in you. Philippians chapter 4, verses 8. Finally, brothers, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, if you think anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think of such things. You see, God left this love letter for us to read, but also to take in and use in your everyday life. These are things I need to think about so I can avoid having a negative attitude. And you know, when you don't get into the Word and when you don't pray, 
your spiritual cup, let's just say this is, this is a pitcher, and you're pouring in the word of the Lord, and you're pouring in church, and you're pouring in uh, fellowshipping with brothers and sisters in Christ, but when you have problems and issues, it uses that. When you have more trials and troubles, it uses that. When you have stressors, and it uses that. And it goes down, it goes down, it goes down. And you know what? If you're not filling yourself up when that negativity or that problem or that issue comes, it's not, there's not going to be anything in there. And you're going you're gonna to give in. You're going to throw in the towel. And you may choose to do or say something that you regret. We all have choices. We all have choices to make, and our choice is what we're going to say with our next words and with our next action. You know, and God calls us to have the strength of the Lord because why? God has a great plan for your life, Jeremiah 29, 11. And you know what? Psalms 28, 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. And I may have some things going on in my life, and I may be struggling at that time, but you know what? I am claiming that scripture. I'm claiming that verse, and when we get filled with this word, that's what we use to strengthen us through that day, through that trial, through that problem, through that episode, and that's what helps us get through. But if we don't get exposed to church, if we don't get exposed to the word, and if we have no wisdom coming in at all, we're empty. And there's no way. You see, because Satan, what he wants to do is rob you from that word, steal that word, and keep the blinders upon you. He wants you to stay in bed. He wants you to be comfortable, be busy, and do other things besides being fed the victory power scriptures that are there for you to claim them on that day when you have troubles and when you have trials and when you have problems and you're feeling negative inside. But it all starts by your choice and your decision. It all starts with the choices. You see, that's a wonderful thing about God. He gives each and every one of us free will. Free will. You have a choice. This is whatever you're going to say with your words next. Whatever you're going to do with your actions next. Now, it tells us here in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have said before you a choice, life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life. He's encouraging you. Choose life so that you and your children may live. Some people have a negative attitude. Some people are so pessimistic and unhappy with both them, themselves and others. And it affects others. But for us, we got to choose to be optimistic and have the deliberate action. When I wake up, I am going to choose to smile today. I am going to choose to give a gift of a smile. I am going to choose to give a word of encouragement, and you know what? Do it when you don't feel like it. Do it when you don't feel like it. I'm going to choose to do that and have a positive outlook. May, many daily decisions are necessary, very necessary. And you know what? This necessary plan will bring victory in your spirit. It will, and God promises that. Victory in your spirit. It all goes down to the scriptures that we need to claim. But you know, understand the truth. Genesis 50 and 20, you intend harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done to saving of many lives. You know what? A lot of times that Satan, that devil, and those situations, they're meant there just to be roadblocks and cause you trouble and harm. But you know what? That's amazing. God's going to use that to make you wiser, make you stronger, and say, you know what? I'm glad it kind of stopped me and put a pause on this situation, because if I would have chose this A, B, or C, it wouldn't have been right for me. I'm glad God closed the door for me. I'm glad, I'm glad God didn't let me go down that path. I'm glad he didn't let me choose that person to be with. It worked out way better. He helped me here. He helped me in this situation. These scriptures apply to us. You know, a lot of times there's intended harm for you. But you know what? God says, no, I'm going to allow this to happen. Because he will never give you something in your life that you can't handle. You can't. You can handle it. But also, we're asking and I'm encouraging you as a minister to you guys or a brother and sister in Christ. You guys, ask God to open your spiritual eyes to these situations and say, look, give me wisdom. Why is this happening? Is it to teach me something? 
Is this for me to be wiser? You know what? A lot of times God allows things to happen in your life is because he's going to bring somebody in your path who's going to go through the same thing, and you're going to say, ah, oh, brother, sister, I've been down that road. I bought the T-shirt, and let me tell you how Jesus helped me through it. Let me tell you how he delivered me. You know, that was a time that I thought, oh, everything was lost. But you know, no, 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 God's been good. He's blessed me, and he's taken me from here to here. And let me tell you how he did it. Let me share my testimony. Let me share what God has done for me. You see how that works? God allowed it in your life, and if it didn't happen in your life, there's no way you could share. There's no way that you can encourage. Go through with a little bit of wisdom. See, this is important that God gives us wisdom wisdom so we can learn and learn how to apply it. Number two, by your devotion. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. It's important for us to have these scriptures, to read these on Sunday morning, read these during the week, read these during your morning devotional. You can hide that word within your heart that you will not sin against God. You know, it's important because you may not have your Bible handy. You may not have your cell phone handy, but you know what? If it's hidden in your heart, it's strong and it's strength. You know, there's times I remember this pastor, he was, he was young, and they let him go up and preach his first sermon. So he was ready to rock and roll. He was up there, and he got up there, and he forgot all of his notes. He left them in the car. Well, there was no time for him to go back. There was no time for him. And you know what? He was kind of panicking a little bit. He was thinking he didn't even know what to say. All his notes, his Bible, everything was in the car. And all the people and all eyes were on him. And they were just staring at him. They're like, it's go time. It's go time. you got to get up there and say something. So he was up there. He got up to the mic. And the first thing that came to his mind, John 3, 16, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, who shall ever believe in this, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And everybody was like, amen. And then he said it again. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and he said it again. And he gave everybody, amen, amen, amen. You know what? He made, he made a sermon out of that. He got everybody so excited, but it was the only thing that he could think of at the time. What did he do? He had the word hidden within his heart. Even though he didn't have nothing else, he started claiming what mattered. God gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The biggest truth, the best sermon in one verse. Best sermon, one verse. You know what? When you're panicking, get one verse in your mind. When you're struggling, get one verse and start claiming it. Start claiming it. When you feel that neg negativity, that pessimistic attitude coming on, my french fries are cold. This pizza's no good. It's hot in here. When you start thinking, oh, I'm going to start praising God. You know, we sing the song, the older hymn, which was one of my favorites. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. When you start counting your blessings one by one, you start seeing all the changes that and where he's taking you from and what he's doing. You see, and you start claiming those things, it makes a big difference. And it's all part of your devotion. What I'm choosing to do and what I'm doing. Many neglect their devotional life. They, in their prayer life, they lack. In their Bible reading, they lack. And it, you know what it does? It brings us defeat. Devotion is necessary for positive thinking, and it impacts what we choose to do, but also it affects if I'm going to have peace, if I'm going to have joy, if I'm going to have love. It's true. What am I taking in? What am I reading? Be faithful in your devotions. Keep praying and believing so you can win over the negativity. Number three, by your diligence. You know what? I may have a lot of distractions going on. Tablets, cell phones, Netflix, my favorite show coming on at five. A lot of distractions going on, but by my diligence and my choice, I'm going to seek God. Proverbs 11.27 says, whoever seeks good finds favor. 
I am seeking his word. I'm seeking God. I'm seeking his choice of this scripture today so I can find favor in him. I am choosing that. You know what? A lot of times we can be so selfish. And you know what? Being selfish, it leads to negativity. Those are only concerned with their own self, what they can get, what's here for me, and how is it going to benefit me. And you know what? This is the big thing. This is super big. If you don't hear anything else, listen to this. This is, this is the big thing. We begin to get negative when things don't go the way we picture them or the way we want them to go or envision it to go. If we don't get that the way we want it, the way we envision it, we get negative. And it may affect the whole rest of the afternoon because it didn't do what? It didn't go our way didn't go our way. It's true. In our mind, we have a picture or we have an idea the way the situation should go. And if it doesn't go our way, what happens? We get negative. And you know what? It's by pinpointing that and knowing that about ourselves, that makes all the difference in the world. By knowing that. You can subdue that negative attitude, but you know what? Focusing on the less fortunate, somebody that doesn't have what you have, or helping somebody, doing something nice, or blessing them in a way. And you know what? Blessing, it doesn't mean that you have to reach into your pocketbook and give them money. It could be doing something. It could be the senior citizen next door throwing out her trash. It could be saying a kind word to somebody, a gift of a smile, a word of encouragement. These are things when you start not focusing on yourself, but blessing others, that's what helps you up here and in your mind. Let's focus on that and let's be diligent about that by our actions. That way we won't focus so much on ourselves and being selfish. Because selfish, that leads us down a wrong way, a wrong path, and a lot of times we're not just so happy because we're not getting what we want. And it's easy to find yourself in that way. So let's shake that off. And the next thing, Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruits of the righteous is the tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Let's encourage others with our testimony, where God's brought us to, how he's worked in our lives, and just say it's simple. And let's focus on by his direction. Psalms 32 and 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I'm claiming that this morning. Lord, I'm opening up this book. We're here at church. Teach me and guide me what I should do, what I should say. Open the door or close the door for me. Lead me and guide me, Lord. Help me be the best that I possibly can be through your word. And give me wisdom. Speak to me. Speak to my heart and show me. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 6, 11, As God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness, his word, and ignore it. Today, as a minister, I'm asking you, don't just take all of this in. And just put it to the side. Let's take all of this in and use it in our everyday lives. Let's not ignore it. Let's trust in him. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lead not in thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Let him lead today. Let's trust in Jesus today. Let's make an honest choice to say, you know what? I'm going to follow his word. I'm going to do the best. Today's a new day. It's a fresh start. And I want to choose Jesus today. I'm choosing Jesus. For those of you that are listening today, those of you tuning in, let's not let another moment go by. Let's not let another week go by. Let this be your time, your opportunity to say, I'm going to choose Jesus right now. I want a fresh start. I need something different in my life. Let's choose Jesus. Let's make a choice and a decision. And maybe you've accepted Jesus. Maybe you've been saved, but you're just not close to him or you're not walking with him like you know you should. Let's rededicate our life to Jesus right now. Let's not let waste another minute. I want to encourage you. We're going to pray right now. And for all of us that are here, you can bow your heads. No one looking around. It's your opportunity to talk to Jesus. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you up to the front. Right where you're sitting, I want to encourage you. Just talk to Jesus. This is your opportunity now. 
For those of you listening, let's go to the Lord in prayer, all of us. Dear Jesus, we thank you for what you did on the cross, Lord. We understand that your blood was shed to take away the sins of the world. Dear Jesus, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of where we fall short. We understand that you conquered the grave and you arose on the third day. We claim you as our rededicating Savior. We claim you as our Lord and Savior today. We invite you into our heart. We accept you as our redeeming Lord today. In Jesus' blessed name we pray, amen. Now, brothers and sisters, if you said that prayer, we believe that you're rededicated. We believe that you're born again. We want to encourage you to find a Bible-believing church. Grab a Bible. Get started with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you don't have a Bible, come visit us, the Fort Concho Mission. We're located at 500 East Avenue D. We'd love to give you a gift from our ministry to you, a gift of a brand new Bible. We pray that you have a wonderful week. God bless you. Amen.